and welcome to Top Solid 7. In this video, we're going to talk about 4-axis radial engraving. As you can see, I'm on a simple Y-axis mill turn machine. It's an Akuma LB2000. To start with, I'm going to turn off the visualization of my machine, and then I'm going to switch to CAD mode. Now, I could have had the CAD already created, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to also show you how to create wrapped geometry for any 4-axis cutting needs. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our 3D sketch environment. I'm going to go to the drop-down menu here, all the way down to operations, and I'm going to choose something called Roll-Up Wizard. With Roll-Up Wizard, I effectively want to unroll that face. Okay. Now, the diameter of the face, I'm going to measure from selecting the face. Perfect. Next, I want to talk about the length of this, and I know that that cylinder is 5 inches long. Cool. Finally, I want to put this at a specific point, and that point is going to be the extreme point of this edge based on the x-axis. And you can see the point show up right there. If I invert this, then it's down there. Basically, you just want it outside the cylinder. Perfect. Once I go ahead and hit the green check mark, I now have that face unwrapped in a special type of sketch we call an unrolled sketch. Now, if I look straight at this, you can see it's broken into angular segments. And we can do all sorts of fun things here. In this case, I'm going to create text. So I'm going to go up to my text, and I'm going to use the word top solid. Okay, we'll set this at zero degrees to start with. And you can see my text is really small. So maybe here what I want to do is change my font information and make it a bit bigger. Maybe we'll make it inch and a quarter. Let's see how that looks. That looks good. Maybe down here I'm going to change the expansion factor as well. Um, actually not the expansion factor. Let's do the spacing. Let's set this to maybe 0.2. So there's a little bit more spacing between our letters. And finally here, I'm going to make this 70 degrees. Perfect. And I'm just going to locate it roughly there. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure profiles is selected and green check mark. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and finish my unrolled sketch. And like that, top solid now rolls that geometry up. Now you could have drawn any profile you wanted to and we'll roll all of that up as well. Next I'm going to switch back to cam mode. Now in cam mode I'll go ahead and turn the machine back on so we can visualize what we're doing a bit easier. In cam mode what I want to do is a side milling in fact. If I go to side milling I'm going to start by selecting the type of tool I want to use. Now in this case I don't want to use a regular end mill, I want to use a ball nose mill, and you don't see it in the list here, so I'm going to go to my expanded tool selection. Here we see ball nose, so I'm going to double click and build a ball nose tool. Now here I'm just going to use an eighth inch diameter ball, good enough. You can obviously set the holder information as you want. Next I'm going to come down here to multi-axis, and in multi-axis I'm going to switch to four axis radial. Finally, I'm going to go to my geometry button, I'm going to zoom up here, and I'll select the T to begin with. Now to begin with, we're going to get an error message here, invalid material height. Okay, And it makes sense because my text is right on the finished surface of that cylinder, so there's nothing to cut. So here what I'm going to do is go to my stock to leave on the floor and say minus 0.02. And now I have toolpath. Perfect. Lastly, I'm going to go to my settings. And I'm going to set a few things. First of all, with cutter compensation, I don't want to be cutting on the outside of the profile or the inside of the profile. I want to be cutting on the original profile without any compensation. The other thing I want to do is I want to set my lead-in lead-out to just be direct. So I'm just going to plunge in, cut 20 thousandths deep, and cut out. Obviously, if you wanted to do this in multiple cuts, you could set this to be, for example, 10 thousandths here, and we'll have two passes there. And now, let's go ahead and add the rest of our geometry. I want to cut that and that. And notice as I select each profile, you're seeing the toolpath being added dynamically. Kind of cool. Click and click. If you want, you can turn off the machine so it's easier to see what you're working on. We'll go ahead and select all of this. And we're done. Pretty cool. From here, I'm just going to hit the green check mark. And now Top Solid is going to go into a light simulation mode. We'll turn the machine back on because, well, that's just more fun. And now you can see that tool coming down and center line engraving. It's just that easy. Lastly, maybe we want to verify this toolpath. So I'm going to right click on this, 
go to verify. Now, maybe you don't know this about our verify, but if you right mouse button click on the part, you can choose whether the part is static or the tool is static here. Right now, I have it as the tool is static, so this will make the part rotate. Awesome. Let's hit play. And now you see it's doing its thing and it's engraving top solid around that cylinder. I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. Check back soon for more cool tips and tricks about Top Solid 7.